Well, hey guys, you may have heard there have been some outbreaks all over the world of monkeypox. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what exactly is monkeypox, and I'm gonna describe for you all the skin findings that happen with this particular viral infection. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. This channel is all things skincare. If that is of interest to you, definitely consider subscribing. Hit the bell notification that will notify you when my videos go live. So I'm filming this video on May 21st, so Saturday. So things may have changed by the time this video goes live. But as of the filming of this video, there have been several outbreaks around the world of monkeypox. And we'll get into what exactly that is. So far, cases have popped up in the US, in Canada, Spain, Italy, the Netherlands, UK, Belgium, Canary Islands, Israel, Germany, Sweden, and Australia. Now, it's not exactly clear how the people who have come down with this got infected. But what is monkeypox? It is a viral infection. It is largely transmitted by contact with infected animals, specifically rodents. It was initially described and identified in a laboratory monkey in 1958, hence its name monkeypox, but it's actually rodents that are the major reservoir or source of this viral infection. How do people get it? It's largely through contact with infected animals, whether it be handling them, a bite from them, or consuming or cooking or preparing uh, meat from these animals. It can be inoculated into human skin through contact with infectious materials, through anywhere on the skin where there's an impaired barrier, such as a bite, a scratch, or any kind of skin trauma. It's transmitted from animals to humans, but human to human transmission can also occur through contact with the bodily fluids. It also can be transmitted from human to human through large respiratory droplets, such as what you would come in contact with if you're like very, very close proximity to someone's face. It can be transmitted through contact with surfaces that are contaminated like sheets, linens. A risk factor for human to human transmission is going to be crowded living conditions, areas where there are poor hygiene, people living very in very, very close proximity to one another. And it primarily happens in the rainforests of Central and Western Africa. People there do become infected with this as a result of handling infected rodents. Here in the US, specifically in 2003, there was an outbreak in the Midwest. That particular outbreak was traced back to to pet prairie dogs who had previously been housed in very close proximity to rodents that were imported to the US from Ghana. Then last summer, actually, in 2021, there was a case in Dallas and a case in Maryland. And both of those individuals had previously traveled to Nigeria. So they had perhaps come in contact there and came back, got the illness, but it was not transferred to anyone else. Now, fast forward now to 2022, we're seeing a lot of new cases popping up around the world in Europe, Canada, the US, Australia. So after you are infected with this virus, it takes anywhere from four to 20 days to start developing symptoms, on average about 12 days. Then you develop a flu-like illness and it starts with a fever, you get chills, profuse night sweats, muscle pain, body aches, headache, backache. There's also sore throat. You can feel short of breath and have a cough. One of the hallmark features though of this, then about two to three days of developing fever, you have really, really prominent and large lymph nodes, uh, specifically in your neck, like under your chin, your jaw area, the lymph nodes get to be a couple of centimeters in size. And this is an important finding. It distinguishes this particular viral infection from infections like chicken pox, for example, because again, you're gonna develop a rash, which brings me to the next point. What exactly does the rash of monkey pox look like? So the rash develops within one to 10 days of getting a fever. Uh, it starts on the face and then spreads to involve the rest of the body. The spots, follow a very predictable course. They start out as small red spots, then they turn into bumps, then those bumps turn into little blisters, then those blisters fill up with pus, then those pus bumps umbilicate, basically just kind of sink in in the center. Umbilicate, think of it like your belly button, umbilicus, a little dividend. Then that umbilicated bump crusts over and then it flakes off. This whole process, every single spot kind of follows along that time course 
and eventually, in about two to three weeks, the rash completely crusts over, flakes off, and goes away. So it's gonna involve the face, your torso, your back, your arms, your legs. It can involve the palms and soles, and it also involves the scalp. In some cases, the rash can be itchy. To the untrained eye, it may kind of appear like chicken pox, which I know a lot of you guys who are quite young, you probably never had to deal with chicken pox. Comment below on if you had chicken pox. <laughs> I did. It may kind of look like chicken pox, but again, the distinguishing feature is gonna be those really enlarged lymph nodes uh, under the chin, in the neck, and also in the groin, if I didn't already mention that. So this rash, it can be itchy, but it's typically not painful. But these spots can go on to scar and leave little pockmark type scars. You can also get a bacterial infection on top of the rash. If you scratch it, especially because the area there, it's an impaired skin barrier is more prone to infection. It shouldn't be painful. If it's painful, that is a signal that perhaps there's an overlying bacterial infection on top of the rash. So when you have this rash, if someone comes in contact with the skin lesions, the blister fluid, they can get sick as well. So it is infectious at that point. But once all of the bumps of the rash have crusted over, it's no longer contagious. It's a pretty involved rash in the sense that it involves pretty much all surfaces, scalp, face, body, arms and legs, palms and soles in some cases. And it's uncomfortable, a little itchy, and it lasts a good long while, anywhere from two to four weeks. So that's a good long while to be dealing with a rash. Fortunately, for the most part, this infection is what's called self-limited, meaning it follows along this very predictable course and then resolves. And the rash can be complicated by an overlying bacterial infection, which would further increase the risk of scarring. In cases in Africa, the death rate from this particular viral infection is anywhere from one to 10%. Most people who do end up dying from this infection have underlying poor health, and it's oftentimes due to complications arising from an overlying bacterial infection. Well, in the 2003 outbreak throughout the Midwest, there were no cases of death from monkeypox. How is it diagnosed? Well, history of any recent travel is really an important piece. If you've come in contact with people or animals who were a source, a swab may be taken to culture for the virus, and then a skin biopsy. If you get a little piece of your skin, a skin biopsy would need to be performed. You can look at it under the microscope, and there are specific changes that are telltale of this type of viral infection. They also can look at it with something called immunohistochemistry to look for specific viral pieces. They also can look at the skin biopsy under a special type of microscope called an electron microscope, and it can show specific viral pieces that really help make the diagnosis even further. So I am in no way, shape or form an infectious disease expert, but I do know about the rash of monkeypox. There were a couple of questions on my board exam, for example, about this. I have never seen a case of it, but I do know what the findings are. I can identify them. So I wanted to make this video for you all because whenever there are crazy headlines like this, I know, you know, it worries people. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about the skin findings. It's really not clear how the people in these individual clusters in different countries who have come down with this, how they were exposed. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this unfolds. Hopefully they'll be able to identify like the, um, you know, trace back the original exposure, contact, clarify what, what that was. I wanted to make this video basically to share with you guys what the skin findings are, because I think it's really interesting. And I think that, it, you know, it's helpful for me to share that for people out there who may be wondering what the skin rash looks like. And I think it's also helpful to you guys who may be reading these headlines and nervous to just kind of understand a little bit more about this particular viral infection. This video is not meant to alarm anybody or evoke fear. I know when we hear about viral, out viral infection outbreaks, especially with everything that's been going on, it can be very, very scary. But uh, yeah, I think at this point, you know, Hopefully the CDC will be able to figure this out and it will be yet another outbreak like the ones we had in 2003 and you know, hopefully no harm will come of it. So to wrap it up, to be clear, this virus 
It's not the same as chickenpox, and it's, it's a totally different virus. It's largely transmitted from contact with infected rodents, uh, but it can be con uh, transmitted from person to person once somebody has come down with it, mostly through close contacts with infected bodily fluids, skin on skin contact, or infected surfaces. And it's a, it's a viral infection that can make you pretty sick for a couple of weeks and you do have a rash that is pretty involved and lasts a couple, anywhere from two to four weeks and that rash can scar. There are some antiviral medicines that may be offered uh, for people who are you know, very ill or people who have underlying medical issues where it would be a concern. I don't want you guys to be unnecessarily worried, but if you haven't traveled recently, you know, hopefully this information may be helpful to you. Hopefully by the time this video goes live, maybe we'll have some updates, some more knowledge, some more information. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.